G'day guys and welcome to Ben's Works. On this week's episode, I'll be making a flat earth side table. For this project, I'll be using some 16mm MDF and the first thing I need to do is cut it into a 12 inch square. I then use my straight edge and find the centre of the square. I'll be using my bandsaw to cut this circle, so I found a scrap bit of timber, measured in 6 inches, hammered in a nail and cut off the head. Here I'm lining the nail up with the centre of the MDF. I give it a firm push to lock it in place. As you can see here, this is now my pivot point. To start this circle, I just push the MDF halfway through the bandsaw and now I clamp the scrap piece down to my table. Now it's as easy as just turning the MDF on the nail to make a perfect circle. It's important to take your time with this part, that way you'll get a nice curve. And now we have the starting point for our table. So the next step is I'm just going to take some sandpaper and just go over all those sharp edges just to smooth them off a bit. So this is where it starts to get messy. So I've got this black plastic bag and I'm just going to cover it over an old lid of a container and you can see that the lid has actually got a lip around it, that way it'll stop the paint and resin from flowing out. Here I'm just putting down some plastic cups, that way I can use them as stilts and rest the board on top. My mum's really into her acrylic pouring at the moment, so she wanted to come over and help me with this one. These are the colours we've chosen today, they should be great for our earth. The first step in preparing the paint is to add some PVA glue. Now I believe this is to help it flow a bit better, but if I'm wrong, please leave a comment down below. Now it's really important that you mix this really well. Now the next step is to add some water, and what that does is it helps dilute the mixture, that way it flows real easily on the board. You can see here just how runny we need it. So firstly my mum's going to put the blue down first. You should always start with your darker colours. Then she's going to come back through and put white over the top. Now it's just a matter of turning the board around and getting those colours all mixed together. Now there's no right or wrong way of doing this, just do it until you've got the desired effect that you're looking for. You can see here that the blue just wasn't quite flowing enough, so we added some more water and now you can see it's flowing really well. Now my mum normally works with lightweight canvases that are easier to hold. I'm going to let her do some commentary from here. That's not too bad. As you can see, that was just way too funny not to let her tell the story. You can see here that we're just adding a bit of extra white around the edges, just to make it look a bit like Earth. If you like the way that my mum's painting's turning out, give her a big thumbs up, drop her a comment down below, she'll get a real kick out of it. Once you've got the look you're going for, just let it dry overnight. So it's now the next day and it's time to pour the resin. I'll be using Artcast Resin by Just Resin and I'll be using the Fast Set Hardener. It's always important that you mix your resin thoroughly, because if not, it just won't harden. Now I'm just pouring the resin on from the middle, letting it all flow out, and then I'll make sure that I cover all the edges as well. I'm just using my finger here just to spread the resin around, just to make sure I've got nice coverage right around the outside. Just like all resins, it's important to get all your air bubbles out, and the best way to do that is with a torch or a heat gun. It brings the bubbles to the surface and then pops them. I'll let the resin cure overnight, and now it's time to sand the back and get it all nice and smooth. A good way to brand your projects is to go online and make yourself up one of these rubber stamps. This one just says handcrafted by Ben's Works and I try and stamp it on all my projects. The legs I'll be using for this one 
are some 25mm or 1 inch round Merbo. I'll be cutting the notches for the table on my miter saw. So they don't roll around on me while I'm cutting them, I just made this simple jig. You can see here that I clamped a stop block to the side of my miter saw, that way it can't go all the way down. Now it's time to cut the notches for the tabletop. You can see here that I made two marks on my saw, that way I know how far to cut. You can see here that I'm test fitting the tabletop and it's just a little bit too tight. So back to the drop saw and we'll just open it up a bit. It's always better to creep up on your final mark, that way it won't be too big. To fix the tabletop to the legs, I'll be using this 5 minute epoxy. Here you can see I'm grabbing my square and I'm just making sure that the leg's nice and straight. Now it's time to apply a finish to the legs and I'll just be using some linseed oil. You can use any finish you want but I like the way that the linseed oil really brings out the colour in the Merbo. I'm also adding some rubber pads to the bottom of the legs just so it doesn't scratch our floor. Just in case anyone was wondering how sturdy this table was, I found the heaviest tool in my shop and I dropped it right on top. You can see here that it's super stable and it's definitely going to hold a cup of tea. Well that's it for this week's episode of Ben's Works, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, I put new how to and build videos out every couple of weeks. If you want sneak peeks of my upcoming projects, check out my Instagram and my Facebook pages, I'll leave all the links down below of where you can find them. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.